Guys, it has been a minute since we've sat down and talked about the Real Housewives of Orange County. I've kind of put a pin in those ladies. Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to my channel. So glad that y'all are here. All right, it's time to review this week's episode of The Real Housewives of Orange County. It's Housewives review time. So COVID's here in um, in Orange County. It's been seven days since the ladies got back from their Palm Springs girls trip and now everything is shut down. All of the ladies, they are required to be filming from their iPhones from their homes they are going into quarantine and you know bravo really did add an extra layer of dramatization with this episode y'all and can we please just discuss and appreciate the fact that bravo put masks on the cast um, intro card. I am living and motherfucking dying. Can we, we're putting it up. Let's just appreciate this, please. So the Real Housewives of Orange County ladies, they are not thriving in quarantine, y'all. They are having a very difficult time Bronwyn specifically, she's out here not being able to use her damn washing machine. How do you know which one you want, Sean? Do I want normal? Yeah. Why don't I want heavy duty? Do that. And then she says that she hasn't been without a housekeeper since high school. This is the first time that I've gone without a housekeeper since I was in high school. High school. I'm done. Braun when she even has kitchen hours, but I would probably do the same thing. Growing up, I was always told once the kitchen is clean, the kitchen is closed, and that toxic behavior has even spilled into my adult life. Who hurt me as a child? Emily, her kids are out here getting in fist fights. And then she says this about quarantining in OC. Quarantining in Orange County is like upscale house arrest. It's like you have to stay in your really big house with a pool and a beach right around the corner. All right. So I just said that all of the ladies, they need to be quarantining at home, filming on their iPhones. But yet Emily, Bronwyn and Kelly have a scene filming together, not socially distant. I'm very confused with the contradicting scenes that I saw all throughout this episode of The Real Housewives of Orange County. And here's another thing that like, as Gina said, gets me sauced. They're all complaining about how everything is shut down, they can't go anywhere, they can't do anything, but yet they all fucking live in their big ass houses with access to literally anything that they want but yet they're out here bitching and complaining. It's just mind blowing y'all. Yeah, Bronwyn, you have a freaking dance club, a movie theater, a pirate ship in your backyard, access to literally anything that you want. And yet you're out here saying how hard life is for you. Cry me a river, all of y'all. Shannon though, her anxiety is through the roof. Not everybody's following my rules. And the rules are that if you're staying at my house, you don't leave my house. You don't make up excuses or do anything. I'm gonna say this though, as much as Shannon Bedore's hypochondriac ways literally get under my skin and piss me off in a way that I've never been pissed off before. She is one of the very few that is taking the COVID prescriptions, prescriptions, <laughs> restrictions very seriously. She has very strict rules about who can come into the home. No one can leave. She's making her quarantine bubble and wearing her mask and I appreciate that. So bravo to you, Miss Shannon Bedore 
for actually taking it seriously. Emily and her husband though, I'm glad to see that they're actually not fighting and screaming during quarantine. They're actually getting along and like being able to joke with one another and laugh together. It's actually really nice to see. So Emily, it looks like she is somewhat thriving with this quarantine, which is nice to see. But y'all, all of these Skype calls and then Gina saying this about salons. Salons are not essential business but they should be for me. That blonde is like ridiculous. You gotta yes. get rid of that do. I mean, for Gina and her wackadoo hair choices, I mean, salons may be an essential business for Gina because we can't have Gina out here getting no boxed hair dye and trying to color her hair at home and giving herself an at-home haircut, that will not end well for Gina or anyone, including myself, because I don't feel like looking at that on my television screen. Thank you very much. So drama is unfolding now with Shannon. Gina, Shannon, they are Skyping or, or Zooming and talking about John and John's side of the family. And if you don't know who John is, John is Shannon's boyfriend. So they actually like leave Shannon's house to go and Galligan and go and see other people, which pisses Shannon off because we all know Shannon is very much a nervous Nelly with COVID. She doesn't want to get it. She's scared of getting it. She's scared of bringing it into her home. And she has these very, very strict rules and guidelines that she wants everyone in her house to follow. And the fact that John and her daughters aren't following these guidelines and these rules that she put in place for her home sent her through the, sent her through the roof, y'all. She is pissed. She's crying. But then let's John back in. So mm, I don't know how I feel about that. But I honestly, I was not aware that Shannon was immunocompromised. I can't talk today. Immunocompromised. I didn't realize that she had underlying health issues. So yeah, we kind of need to protect Shannon Bador because she is at an at-risk age. She's no spring chicken. Here are my thoughts about Shannon's rules. It's her home. That's where she lives. If that is what she needs to do in order to make herself feel comfortable and safe, then I think everyone living in that home should follow those rules. And if they don't want to follow the rules, then don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you, you know? Like, get the fuck out. But, y'all, Elizabeth, she's out here buying industrial rolls of paper towels. Gina has some sort of grocery store hookup and her hookup stashed a 24 roll pack of toilet paper under patio furniture. And Shannon is yelling at John to go to Target because Target just got a shipment of um, paper towels or toilet paper. I can't remember which of the two. So she's like, go, you need to go now, John, go now. I wish I had a hookup like that to let me know that, hey, we've got Lysol wipes. You should buy some because I would like some Lysol wipes and some Lysol spray and it's beginning to sell out again, which why are we panic buying people? I can't and will not understand. Can we talk about Bronwyn's anger issues this season of The Real Housewives of Orange County, please? Bronwyn has got some serious anger problems and I don't know if it's the quarantine or the not drinking, but she's unraveling. Quarantine has made her un hinged. She said that she feels trapped in her marriage and like her life. Something's going on with her, but so many people are going around, hold on, spoiler, allegedly, allegedly, so many people are going around saying that Bronwyn is using her sobriety only for a storyline. Yeah, only for a storyline. And I'm really hoping that that is just a rumor and allegedly because you can't do that, all right? You can't fake sobriety. But yeah, quarantine hasn't been looking good for Bronwyn. She's not thriving. She's not out here thriving. And here come the masks, y'all. Here come the masks. And can we peep Shannon's six feet mask? I kind of really want one of those masks because I really want bitches to back the fuck away from me 
Do not get close. I will literally be practicing that rule when um, the pandemic ends because I'm really loving my personal bubble of space. Seriously. So now halfway through the episode, they mention that they are now allowed to gather again because as this episode each day went on, they had a count quarantine day one, two, 15, 28. So it looks like they filmed throughout the entire quarantine. And then once it ended, they were allowed to gather in groups. And Elizabeth had a huge house party. But I mean, they were kind of doing that during quarantine, meeting in groups. Emily, Bronwyn, Kelly, I'm looking at all of you. You all gathered in groups and filmed together. So, mm, contradiction much, contradiction, just saying. Get it together, the Real Housewives of Orange County. Seriously. Now we gotta talk, we gotta dissect this one scene. Here we go again, talking about Tamra. I don't have a friendship with Tamra anymore. She has decided to take it upon herself to, on a regular basis, trash me. We seem to not let this poor woman go. Shannon is going around talking about her friendship with Tamara and how Tamara is fake and so upset that Gina hung out with Tamara. And it just is like, why? What is the point here? Like, why are we doing this? She has left the show. She is happy. She is living her life. Shannon, is this the only storyline that you have? Like you really need to keep talking about Tamra because you don't have anything else going on in your life. I'm just a little baffled by all of this. Shannon is a liar. I sacrificed other friendships to devote more time to my friendship with Tamra. Saying that she sacrificed friendships in order to be closer to Tamra is a 100% lie. Shannon is a leech and leached on to Tamara during all of Shannon's bullshit issues with her divorce. So um, I think the table should be reversed. I'm just saying, I am just saying, leave Tamara alone, Shannon Bedore. Leave her alone. Tamara's not even part of the Real Housewives of Orange County anymore. She left, she's living her life. Why are we still talking about her? I love Tamara. I want her to come back, but like, she's off the show. All you guys do is talk about Vicky and Tamara and how they have hurt you to the deepest core, which I will not understand. Let it go, please. Emily makes a good point though. Shannon is the freaking Regina George of the Real Housewives of Orange County. Shannon the door is kind of like the Regina George of the Orange County area. Like you do the dirty work, I'll look at it, but then I got clean hands. I mean, she is. Shannon is a, the true villain. And I don't think that she's being painted by editing and producers to be a villain. No, I think she's straight up the villain and she knows exactly what she's doing and she's a snake and I don't trust her. And I kind of want her gone next season. I'm just kind of over the crazy, over the top, dramatic bullshit because that's what it is. Bullshit. I digress though. Can we talk about the sloppy editing of this episode? of the OC, seriously. So we went from Bronwyn, Shannon, Emily, Kelly, to hanging out to this scene. Of Bronwyn and um, Emily Skyping still in quarantine. And then Bronwyn saying, oh, it's the first time that I've showered in God knows how long and how she's struggling with not drinking. But just the scene prior, they were all hanging out together but now they're all back in quarantine it's the timeline isn't adding up here and i have two eyeballs and i can see what's happening i'm just really confused with you know in one scene they're all skyping and then they're all hanging out in groups and it's just back and forth and the timeline just it's not adding up and it doesn't make sense 
So Emily and Bronwyn, they're Skyping. I'm just a little confused because we go from hanging out in groups in person to Bronwyn and Emily having a a one-on-one -on -one via Skype, but then Bronwyn and Shanyan, Shanyan? I'm just a little confused with the whole hanging out in groups and then Skype. It's like we're going back and forth. Like one scene we're all hanging out in groups and then we have another scene with Bronwyn and Emily Skyping and talking to then Bronwyn and Shannon having a one-on-one -on -one in person. I'm just a little confused. Are we allowed to hang out in person or are we not? Are we filming at home or are we not? Because I watched the Kardashians live through COVID and they do everything through their phones, 100%. They're not really gathering in groups. They're doing everything virtually. I'm just confused. I think the editing is very extremely sloppy. So Elizabeth's divorce is finally settled. I think it was very unclear, but I think it's been settled, which maybe, just maybe, she'll be a little bit more open and honest about her situation. And maybe Jimmy will get some sex. There, I said it, that's my opinion. Also, I just, I just noticed this. So Bronwyn visited Shannon at her house. Shannon put on her six feet mask at the front door, but now it appears as if they're on a weird like upper floor balcony cabana that looks nothing like Shannon's backyard because we all know what Shannon's backyard looks like from a few episodes ago at the party. And Shannon has a different mask in her hand. So another exhibit A, B, C, D of how sloppy the editing is this episode. It's very bizarre. It's extremely b bizarre. Timelines aren't adding up. You were like FaceTiming and Zooming with people, but then hanging out in groups and going back and forth between the other. I'm so, I don't understand what is happening. I guess anything goes in the Real Housewives of Orange County. Also, Shannon's out here digging up financial documents of Elizabeth's showing like a house was in foreclosure or something and then running around and talking about it and causing bullshit drama. Like who does that? Shannon, you are bored. All you're out here doing is freaking Nancy Drewing Elizabeth's personal life, digging up financial documents and just talking and running your mouth about Tamara. Wow. And then we end the episode with the beginning of the Black Lives Matter movement. Bronwyn, she has been very instrumental within the Real Housewives of Orange County, using her voice, using her platform to stand up for social injustice, which I 1000% applaud. Like you are using what you have for the better good of the cause, which good for you. I mean, Gina and Bronwyn, they're both actively doing what they need to do in order to you know, use their voices and use their platforms. Gina, she's out here talking with Giselle from Potomac. I didn't realize that those two were friends, but they are. And it's just nice to see at least some of the cast give a fuck about what's going on in the world. Seriously, I'm really proud of Bronwyn. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! You know, I'm just really, I'm really proud of Bronwyn. She said that she's not gonna use her privilege to turn a blind eye any longer, that she's pretty much woke and she will not shut up. Oh, and then Shannon's daughter tests positive for COVID, um, totally freaks out because that's what Shannon does. Um, and then I just wanna say this, Shannon says that she got tested twice and then made the doctor test her again. What a great fucking life to get tested for COVID three times in a row. That's a level of privilege that I will never understand, ever. So the ladies of the Real Housewives of Orange County are living through COVID and I am so extremely confused because I don't understand the timelines. Nothing is adding up. The editing is sloppy. We are Skyping and Zooming, but yet hanging out in groups, I do not understand. I do not understand. And I refuse to talk about the bullshit that Kelly is going around saying about the pandemic. We're not even gonna give that any 
life. If you want to know, Google it, bitch. That's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this review of The Real Housewives of Orange County. It airs every Wednesday at 9 p.m. on Bravo. I will talk to you guys later. If you want to catch up on other Real Housewives of Orange County videos, they will be in the description below. Make sure you get yourself subscribed to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up. Doing both of those things really help my channel grow so much. All right, guys, sound off in the comments below. I want to know your thoughts. I'll talk to you later. Bye.